Praise God. It is our pleasure to bring before you the school that we are instructors with, and that is Antioch School of Urban Ministry located in the Bronx, New York. We come under the auspices of our Church Love Gospel Assembly, and we have been in existence of a number of years, and we have been through ups and downs as a school of biblical learning, but at the same time, God is at work continuing to establish and build and bring Antioch to a place where individuals can come, believers, uh, those who are still in the process of coming to faith in Christ Jesus, can come and learn the word of God. Our prior president of the Bible College, ASM, as we affectionately call it, Pastor Dorothy Lewis, and she gave it the phrase, where well, the learning and the burning comes together. The learning of biblical doctrines, as well as the burning being led by the Holy Spirit, to bring students and ourselves as instructors into a deeper knowledge of the word of God, which will ensure a deeper walk with God. So tonight we are honored to present to you the teachers who will be hosting the classes for our upcoming spring semester. And they each will introduce themselves as well as Give us information about what the course they will be teaching will be centered on. And it is my pleasure to present tonight our Minister Diane Rodriguez. And another aspect is that our instructors are in locales in the Bronx, in New York, as well as outside of New York. So each one will speak about the course and we'll introduce themselves. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to start tonight with Minister Diane Rodriguez. So Minister Diane, would you share with us what your course will be on? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Diane Rodriguez. I've been a longtime member of Love Gospel Assembly since 1974, before it was even called Love Gospel Assembly. Um, I got saved as a teenager. And um, I'm currently living in Pennsylvania with my husband of 49 years. And uh, I've been in many ministries in the church, starting with the children's ministry. My first teaching was in uh, BBS. And um, I've done children. I've done adults. I've taught the teens. I've also been a discipleship teacher, a Sunday school superintendent. And um, I was a worship leader in Love Gospel for 25 years. And that was really where my heart was, but also teaching in Antioch for at least 20 years I've been teaching. So I'm going to be teaching this semester systematic theology. Now, systematic theology is um, going to be taught in two semesters. So we will be covering in this first semester, we will be covering um, certain topics. And then in the next semester, we'll go to the other ones. But just so that, you know, systematic theology is a study of in our Christian faith, dealing with the matters that address our beliefs and what the Bible has to say about them. Because sometimes we believe things and we have no idea why we believe it or who's the one who said we should believe it. But this is letting us know what does the Bible teach us and what is it going to show us. So in this course, we're going to be learning different aspects of systematic theology, of theology. And the areas that we're going to cover, we're going to cover a brief um, introduction to theology and then go right into the knowledge of God, God himself, the Trinity, and God in his relationship to his creation that he has done. We will also go into the study of man, his nature, and the tragic effects of sin and evil will also be addressed. So we'll go over angels and demons and miracles and things like that. We'll also be studying the person and work of Jesus Christ, along with his incarnation, his atonement, and his exaltation. And we will um, also cover our way of salvation, the way of salvation 
with regards to our calling, repentance, regeneration, justification, regeneration, um, that is all going to be covered. And then we'll end that semester with the Holy Spirit. And then in uh, systematic theology too, we will go further into the Holy Spirit and his gifts and uh, the manifestation of him. So that's what we'll be covering. Um, the book that we'll be reading is um, a book in three volumes. It's Renewal Theology, a Systematic Theology from a Charismatic Perspective. It's a three volume book. In the first semester, we're gonna be covering the first whole volume and half of the second volume. So the requirements for the course will be to keep up with the reading because we're gonna be reading all of that. And each chapter that you read, you'll have to answer five questions for that chapter with regards to the information that you've learned. Um, I like my students to come to class. That will be part of your grade if, if you come to class. Um, that you do the reading assignments and that um, at the end, there will be a requirement for um, a reaction paper. What did you get out of the class? What is the thing that stood out the most to you? So I really hope that you want to be part of the class. I love teaching. And um, I think that this is something that we all need, whether we're young in the Lord or old in the Lord. There's things we need to be reminded of because sometimes in our walk, we forget the simple things or the things, the first things that we've learned. So welcome. I hope to see you in my class and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Diane. And as you made the statement that whether we're young in the Lord or we've been in the Lord many years, we always need that refreshing of the word of God, looking at the theology in which we believe in and why we believe in it. Always a refreshing course to be able to attend. Hallelujah. And our next presenter will be Pastor Michael Rivera, and he will share on the class that he will be teaching. Thank you. Uh Elder Brown, it's good to see everybody here. Um, hi, students, uh, or at least potential students of the class. My name is uh, Mike Rivera. Uh, my friends call me, and my closest friends call me Pastor Mike. Um, I've been involved in ministry for a very long time. I think um, uh, uh, our minister, Diane, says in 1974, it started going to even before it was called Love Gospel Assembly, I started going in 1978. Uh, so four years later, you know, winding up at this church that really did a uh, tremendous, powerful job in developing leaders, I would say. Um, and then from there, uh, grew doing Discipleship 101 in, in uh, Love Gospel Assembly, uh, running the evangelism ministry. I remember coming out of Bible school, doing that. Um, and our first uh, first experience over at Paul Park, um, <coughs> excuse me, that over 500 people came to the Lord that day. I remember that it was a tremendous time uh, we had. Uh, with that, the Lord led me to do some some um, some interesting uh, things, and I had an interesting journey with the Lord concerning on leadership and the capacity of leadership. Got involved in uh, working for the Department of Public Health when I moved from New York City to Boston. And, uh, and I began to do a lot of leadership development for the secular uh, communities and things of that nature, uh, dealing with conflict resolution and so forth. And then uh, from there, uh, the Lord led me to uh, develop a ministry called Jethro Ministry, which is a ministry uh, strengthening leadership tools, not developing leaders, but strengthening their tools and challenging them on, uh, uh, in, their, in their style of leadership and, and how they do that. From there, it developed even more that I got involved in men's ministry, working with uh, one of the largest uh, men's conferences in the country, national uh, national conference. It's called Iron Sharpens Iron. And my duties there is to develop leaders and challenge also pastors and, and everyone else on uh, their leadership style and how they're managing and even defining this term, this infamous term that we use so much, leader, you know. Uh, for some of us, we don't know that uh, there's over 800 different definitions on it. 
So if there's 800 different definitions on it, they don't know what it is. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. How do you define it? We can measure, though, we can measure style. You can measure behavior on leadership and so forth. So we're going to look at some of the things in this course called um, a survey of Old Testament and New Testament leaders. And how does that compare to even our contemporary leadership today? Um, the course is going to deal with looking at uh, Abraham's leadership style, David's leadership style, even Jacob, uh, even look at maybe some of the kings and how they dealt with a nation, how they dealt with people and so forth. And then define what this term leadership. I have my own definition that I think is very close to a biblical perspective. Um, and I'll, I'll give it to you even right now that it's uh, not about being in charge. That's what it is. It's not about being in charge, but caring for those in your charge, which really puts a challenge on us as leaders. Uh, and what that means is this. We are managing somebody else's affair, somebody else's estate. And who's that that we're managing? Who's the person that we're their estate is? It's Jesus Christ. He's going to come back and ask us, what do we do with that which he's given us? It belongs to him. So we're just actually a leader is actually a steward of managing somebody else's affair, and caring for those in their charge. And that's a challenge. So we're going to look at some of the things like that. We're going to uh, talk about the calling of God and how does a person get into the area of leadership and how God separates them. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the contemporary leaders and look at some videos and even at the history of this country at, uh, just about in the early 1900s, what happened uh, at the very beginning of the Iron uh, um, what they call that revolutionary time in America where the steel mills and everything was just booming along and something happened in California, one of the greatest revivals, but it took one man's leadership ability to make it happen. Uh, and what happened there? We're going to look at that and look at some videos. Uh, the requirements is going to be a participatory part of the students being involved. So you need to be in the class. Uh, that's one, two, the students are going to do some presentations as well. Uh, and then part of the other one is doing a two-page interview. What I want is you're going to interview a leader. You're going to ask several questions, and I'll give you those questions when you take those class, what they are, and interview them, and then come back with the result of that interview. Uh, but those are the requirements, and I pray that uh, as you consider prayerfully considering any of the classes that are going to be presented here, that um, when you come to my class, that God will do something in your heart with that. Amen. So uh, thank you for being part of Antioch, and thank you for allowing me to share. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Just from the two that is already presented, Minister Diane and Pastor Michael, has a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn. So please be thinking and making yourself available to take these courses. And then next we're going to have Sister Yvette Corbin, who's going to be doing a seminar, a part two of a seminar that she taught uh, in a prior semester, and she will be following up with that. So Sister Yvette. Hi, uh, yes, I'm Yvette Corbin, and uh, I'm a member of Van Ness Assembly of God, but I am definitely part of the Love Gospel family. And um, I will be doing a one-day seminar on becoming a person of influence. And this is the book actually here, Becoming a Person of Influence by John C. Maxwell. So when we think about influence, usually we think about someone who has a title, someone who has a position, someone who has power. Or we might think about people that are on social media platform, right? TikTok, you know, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, that's where we think about influence. And even this weekend, it's a major weekend with the Super Bowl coming up, right? And all of the advertisement dollars that are going to be spent because they want to influence our behaviors and our purchasing powers and all of that. But um, what is influence and what does it mean to have influence and that's what we're going to explore in our one day seminar and we're going to start off taking an influence inventory 
Have you ever thought about who do you influence? Have you thought about how do I influence? Have you thought about how many people do I influence? When do I influence? Why do I influence? Because um, really, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. That's what John Maxwell says. So in this seminar, we're going to go over 10 principles of influence, and we're going to use the word influence. Each letter stands for a certain principle of what it means to influence um, someone. We'll be looking at integrity, nurturing, faith, listening, understanding, enlarging, navigating, connecting, empowering, and reproducing. So that's what we're going to be looking at when in the one day seminar, um, for those of you who are going to take it for credit, there will be um, some assignments that you'll have to do, particularly a, a written paper. But, you know, other than that, I just want you to think about who is the greatest influence in your life and how does that manifest itself on a daily basis? Because you know what? Everyone influences somebody. So I hope that you'll come and join me on the seminar and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. And praise God, praise God. And that is big in society today. Who has the most hits? Who's the greatest influencer on social media? But we know that Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Top Jesus in any form of action. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we have to learn that as we learn about being influences in the arena of, arenas of life that God has placed us in. Yes. Our family, community, our work, how do we influence them? So that seminar should be enticing to help you to help us to understand how we influence others. Thank you, Sophie. And next we have on the rostrum our own Pastor Lillian Gatorez, who will also be doing a seminar and she will inform us. Bless you, my brothers and sisters. Pastor Roser already mentioned my name is Pastor Lillian Gutierrez. I'm one of the pastors at Love Gospel Assembly in the Bronx. I actually got to Antioch. It was called Logos Bible College back then. 1982, I went through and got my bachelor's, and then I continue on and got my master's there. And then in 1989, I started teaching. The first class I taught was the Pentateuch. That was quite a, quite a challenge and quite awesome. So Antioch is very special to me in so many different ways. And so it's a pleasure for me to come back this semester and do a seminar in April, Lord willing, I'll be doing a seminar entitled Waiting on God. Now, I know wait and waiting is not a popular thing because we're part of this microwave generation. We like things done, not even today. We want it done yesterday. That's how instantaneously we are living. Everything is automatic and instant. But God is never in a rush. And when you look at scripture, God is very, very... Um, step-by-step -step oriented, time oriented, and he does things perfectly in his own time, in his own way. So we're going to be looking on waiting on God. Our basic uh, scripture will be Isaiah 40, 31. They who wait upon the Lord shall be renewed. They will mount up with wings of eagles, run and not grow weary, will walk and not faint. And there's a, a, a very special reason why the Lord chose an eagle when he speaks about waiting, because as you, most of you know, I'm sure the eagle is a very unique creature and within its wings, there are some very special attributes that teach us a lot about waiting on God. So we're going to look at scripture. There are over 120 scriptures that have the word wait or waiting, but the biblical word used is not one that implies being passive. It's one that talks about being actively engaged and participating as you're waiting on God 
for the fulfillment of the promises he's made for you. So we'll look at some uh, biblical characters that had to wait. Abraham had to wait. David had to wait. I'm sure Pastor Michael is going to talk about that in his leadership class. God will call you, but then you have to wait on him for the right time, the right occasion, the right place. So waiting on the Lord. And as you're waiting, there are tremendous lessons that we learn. We learn who God is while we're waiting. We learn who we are because sometimes we don't realize what's still in us. And it's in the waiting that things come to the surface and God will deal with us and he'll deal with our characters as we're waiting on him. But how awesome when God is finally on that target date at the right time, he fulfills his promise. So God has not forgotten your promise. He's waiting for the right timing. And so we're going to be dealing with some of those issues. We will, for those who are taking it for credit, we will be using, and I'm going to hopefully hold, I don't know if you could see it, Waiting on God by Charles Stanley. I chose this particular book. I have a few, but this one, you know, Charles Stanley was such a practical, very on-target teacher. So he really deals with waiting on the Lord in very practical ways, very interesting ways. So we're going to be using that text as a required reading. Also, um, a paper, a, a character study on one of the biblical characters and what happened when they had to wait on the Lord, what, what took place in their lives, what the Lord did or didn't do, and how the Lord came through when the promise was fulfilled. So waiting on the Lord, they who wait upon the Lord will be renewed. And we're going to mount up. You know, there's a difference between flapping and mounting. That's why God said, they who wait upon the Lord are not like a chicken. A chicken has to flap, but the eagle mounts up. And there's something about mounting up that's so awesome in terms of perseverance and, and trust and waiting on the Lord and character formation. So I pray that you join us. It's going to be two um, Thursday nights in April. And let's continue to wait upon the Lord because we shall be renewed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Excitement is already rising, mounting up like eagle. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Lillian. And coming down to myself, I also will be doing a seminar. My name is Pastor Rosa Powell Brown, one of the pastors of Love Gospel Assembly, in which I've been in affiliation with for, I always base it on my son's age. So it's well over 40 years that <laughs> I've been around Love Gospel Assembly. I also attended Antioch, received my degree through Antioch, and I have was asked a few years ago to oversee Antioch, and now I'm the current director slash overseer of Antioch, ASUM School of Urban Ministry. So we are just bubbling with excitement of what God is doing with our school, how he's taking us to new heights in him. And one of the purpose of Antioch that was based on the fact that Bishop Gerald Kaufman wanted to prepare inner city pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles to be able to minister in the urban setting. He himself went to a Bible college outside of New York and along with some of the other people members in the early days of the school, but the burning in his heart was that we have an inner city school that understands the city and inner city setting. So I have taken on the responsibility of building a curriculum within Antioch under the title of an urban ministry. I did teach a course two years ago on uh, urban ministry, and I'm going to be doing seminar this coming spring semester in relationship to the class that was taught. It will be a practicum, effective urban ministry. 
because in the course you will be required those who will take it for credit or even if you're audited we won't leave you out you can participate you will be required to visit not only a spiritual setting of ministry dispersing the gospel message, message, sharing the gospel message, but looking at this ministry of the ministry that you choose to do some research on how are they ministering to the residents of the inner city. And in connection with that, we have many social organizations within the city that takes care of the social needs of individuals. But we know that the gospel is a holistic gospel. It carries a social component also. Jesus was not outside of doing social work within the cities that he visited. He took the gospel message but he also ministered to the need of the people. If there was a need for healing, he made sure that he healed. If there was a need for food, remember the narrative of the 5,000 that he fed in one setting? And not only even that, taking care of the physical need, but he also, it's social attachment. He attended a wedding and he was asked to turn the water into wine because they had uh, taken on all of the wine, drunk it, and they wanted more. And his mother asked him to do this. So not only did he take care of the physical need, but he was also involved with the social need, the interaction. It was at a wedding celebration where his first miracle occurred within a social setting. So we will do a, that comparison or parallel study of social organizations as well as spiritual organizations, the church within a local community. Urban ministry is a topic that is getting much, much, uh, let's say work done in that area. And I have selected, I won't even hold them up. I have selected a number of books that I'm reading about urban ministry as well as restoring communities. And we know that the gospel message will restore a community when the local church reach out beyond the members coming to church on a Sunday, a fellowship and the hearing of a message and then go home and the doors of the building is locked for the rest of the week. But we need to look at the fact that urban ministry is a seven-day event, that it's ongoing. My, myself, I've been involved in urban ministry for a number of years. I was a member of the homeless team where we got up on Saturday mornings and went out into communities where the homeless resided in abandoned buildings in the parks. And we ministered to them, we took food for them, but we also ministered the gospel to them. So the setting of the urban and urban setting has so many opportunities for the gospel to be taught and to be lived out. We would be manifest Jesus on the earth through the ministry within the cities. And we know the cities are unique places of residence with a multiplicity of races and cultures and just making ourselves aware of this and allowing the Holy Spirit to use us in such settings. So that's what this practicum class will be about. And yes, you will be required to go and volunteer in a social organization that reaches out to the community. And as I said, a spiritual ministry that teaches and preaches and make manifest the gospel message within the uh, community in which it is situated. And we want to do that so that we can deepen our understanding 
or what urban ministry is. And as I said, the name of our school, we affectionately call it ASM, Antioch School of what? Urban Ministry. Praise God. So again, we welcome you and your interest in the courses that's going to be taught this spring, spring semester, along with the seminar. And we will be having our orientation for the spring semester on Thursday, February the 29th at 7 p.m. And it will be by Zoom. You will have the opportunity to meet the other teachers also of Antioch. We are the ones that God has chosen for this semester, but we have a multiplicity of instructors and you will get an opportunity to meet them also. So you can go online at asomonline.org and find the information about registration and about the orientation and even more of the history of the school. So we thank you for spending your time with us. We thank you for giving a listening ear to what the spring semester of Antioch will bring forth. God bless and reach out to us. We're waiting to hear from you. Amen and amen. Thank you teachers for presenting tonight. And as I say, it's an exciting time and we're looking and serving an exciting God.